Hello. This is Philip Brooks with Backwoods Brooks Knives. And I wanted to do a quick video on doing reloading with the Lee Loader. This is the 38 Special Lee Loader. And the contents is very simple. You have your depriming die. It's got a hole in there to where you can <coughs> pop that primer out with your teeth depriming tool. It's got a little punch at the end. Just goes in like that. You've got your priming tool, which is a little spring-loaded plate here with a hole in it that the primer sets in. Oh, and this is also your uh, bullet plunger. It's got the sizing die and also it's the the rest so that when you've ran this through the sizing die, you can see it gets mushed in there. You get this popped back out after shoving it onto the priming die. I'll show you the entire setup. Then you put your powder in, it comes with a 5cc powder measure. Um, and then you can use that to both uh, line up where you want your bullet to set in the case and then you also have a crimping tool. To make the bullet set in easier you've got this little tool that flares out the edges of your the mouth of your cartridge. So Let's go through this. To load, first you need a spent case. Now you need to get that primer out of there so you set it in your depriming die. Take your deep primer, give it a hit with a hammer. Simple as that. There's your spent primer. Throw it away, put it in a bag somewhere, do whatever you want with it. Then Take the case that now is deprimed. Now here comes the part where you guys will get to jostle around. Take, uh, with these dual-sided hammers, take the harder head, your plastic head. You can use the rubber head for a lot of like your depriming and uh, just general bashing where you want a light strike. But for pounding in the primer, you want as hard as you can get. Uh, that's not metal. You still need this to give a little, give a little bit. So, have a great ride. Hopefully that didn't shake too much, but there will be more shaking. Okay, so now from here, we have our case resized, but it's still tight in there. So that means that we can use this part set on here to reprime our casing. So just pop out a primer and set it the right way into that little hole. You'll have to see, let me see if I can, let me get behind the camera to where I can see I'm showing you this properly. Focus. Well, you see that little triangular thing? That is the anvil. That sets up against the case wall and forms a striking surface when the primer is struck by the firing pin. As that fire or the primer outer outer wall gets pressed in onto that anvil, it compresses the explosive material and ignites it, which will then ignite your powder. So very important, that has to be the right side up. <clears throat> now, you take your die, you set it over, then you take your priming punch. This has a nice little hole in the middle so that you don't go setting anything off. 
you want to give the uh, sizing die a firm hold drop this in and I've held it like this before which is a little bit more stable but I found that you can just hold right here take your hammer and give it about three or four good wraps so here comes the shake again Lift it up and then feel at the bottom. If this is not flat, you need to stick it back on and give it another hit because you do not want that primer to be uh, elevated from the surface of the, the cartridge rim. Now that you've got a new primer seated home, stick it back on your depriming die. Wrap it till it comes loose. Of the sizing die, and you won't need to use this anymore. So put that down. Next, you take your flaring tool, set it in. I like to use the rubber end for this. Give it one or two good taps, and that just puts a very slight flare at the end of that cartridge. And right now I am using uh, 158 grain semi wad cutter bullets, lead solids. So for the Lee loader, instead of giving you specific uh, grain counts, it gives you a scoop. Now, if you use a different powder with this scoop, it'll give you different performance. So, if you look down on this data chart, actually, let me get my priming tool, or D-primer. So, I'm down here, 158 grain lead bullet. And it won't focus, there it goes. So I can use either SR4756, which will give me a 0.5 dipper. It will give me 4.5 grains of powder, and it'll get me about 818 feet per second. I'm using IMR Trail Boss, which is a lighter load, and it's easier for practice. And with a 158 grain bullet, 44, uh, 441 feet per second is enough to kill small game or whatever. And is great for planking. But I will end up eventually getting some of the, the SR4766 or 4756. SR4756 because I do want to load for a little bit more defensive capacity for revolvers. <clears throat> but with our trail boss, since it is such a light load, you just take it, mount it up there, dump all of that in, set the case back into the depriming die, Take the sizing die with that funnel shape on top because that also has your bullet sizer in it or a bullet swage. Take your bullet, drop it in the top, push down until you can't push no more and then you get your bullet setter. Give it a push. If you need to hammer it, hammer it. Get it down to where it's made contact with the case. And if you can push it, push it. If you can't, take the rubber end. And just hammer it till it's seated. Now, this is adjustable. You just have to turn this and it'll move the you can screw that in and out for different size bullet shapes and 
uh, different size of or how much you want to put the, the bullet into the case. In general, you want to have the bullet just about there. That way, when you go to crimp, you have some meat left to crimp around. So you're not, uh, you're not shoving that bullet all the way in so that uh, you're crimping onto this portion here. So you want a little meat right there, but you don't want too much of that out or you're gonna ex uh, increase the overall length of your cartridge. And then, if, especially if you're using something like a revolver, you could run into a potential, if you have very tight tolerances, you could end up making a cartridge that's too long and it'll jam up your gun. So very important, keep that as far down as you can do it reasonably safely. Now you're going to flip your sizing die over and then that swage block is also the crimping tool. So you're going to set that over. You got to fiddle with it a little bit to get it that flared rim to pop in and you'll see it popped in there. And you just set it down, take the rubber side, and wrap it about twice. See how it just dropped right off there? It's because we've got a nigh perfect crimp on the end of that bullet. So, this will go bang. It's a long process, but uh, the cool part about this is, is this kit was 28 bucks. It's extremely cheap. So if you're, you've only got one cartridge that you want to load for, or you don't plan on loading a lot of cartridges, or you want something, because, I mean, watch this. If I take this die, pop it in here, set the sizing die on top of that. Actually, that won't work. But, so we do, we do it like this. Go like that, like that. That's not a very big package. You wrap that up in something, and this could go in a range bag very easily. Oh, you need your dipper too. That is not a lot of material to put in a range bag. You can reload while you're at the range if you so desire, if you have the time. You could, if you had like a uh, 44 mag or 357 magnum that you were uh, using for bear defense up in the mountains, you didn't want to carry a lot of pre-made shells, but you had, uh, I don't know why you'd end up doing this except for in a uh, long-term scenario. Say you only want to carry 50 rounds but you want to also carry uh, extra lead or um, some reloading supplies, one of these will fit right in the backpack and it doesn't weigh that much. And it'll do everything you need it to do. You don't need a hammer. You can use a stick, get a baton cut out and use that. It is just a very nice system to have, especially when it can be as versatile as it is. So, this was Philip Brooks with Back with Brooks Knives, and I'm signing off.